Hi everybody, this is Lance from ThetaTraders.com. In this video, I want to go over the iron butterfly strategy and how I've been implementing this strategy. I've been in a test phase the last few weeks and starting to actually place these trades. It's going to be based a lot on the expected move video. So I watched a previous video on my channel on expected move. There'll be a link in the playlist down below. And I like the iron butterfly in cases where it's not going to be much of a range in the futures market overnight. So I've been placing these trades usually at the end of market close within 15, 20 minutes of market close. And then I tend to buy them back right at the next day's open on a one DTE trade. So an iron butterfly, not an iron condor, even though it is a type of iron condor. Iron butterfly is when we're going to sell an at the money call money put and then we're going to buy the wings so buy an out of the money put and an out of the money call um, at a certain width and we tend to look at the expected move in this case um, essentially a lot like a straddle where we're going to be at the same strike price but we don't want an unlimited loss by not buying those calls and the out of the money so we're using that for a bit of protection as well as getting good returns on these as long as um, implied volatility doesn't change too much go up higher or if the um, actual stock price doesn't move much overnight. So let's look at some of the notes on the strategy and let's get right to it. So here are the notes on the Iron Butterfly strategy. If you want to look through the slides, there's a link in the description down below this video. So what is the Iron Butterfly? Iron Butterfly strategy is a neutral options trading strategy. We're going to sell both the call and the put option at the exact same strike price. We tend to sell them at the money. Um, in the future, we'll look at selling them at slightly different strike prices, but it's a delta neutral strategy, and we don't want the market to be moving a lot. So we're just going to sell them nearly at the money. We're also going to be buying a call and a put option at a higher and lower strike price, respectively. So meaning you're going to buy a call option at a higher price than the at the money, buy a put option at the lower price than the at the money. So we'll be out of the money in those cases. The strategy generates profit when the underlying asset remains within that certain price range. We don't want dramatic differences in SPX or any options that you're selling with this with, because then you can hit the max loss scenario. So we're looking for range-bound trades here. And this is known as the profit zone. It does limit potential profits outside that range because we're buying the out-of-the-money options. So here's a sample graph of it. We'll be selling a short put and a short call, and this is the current price of the stock. So the stock price is at 300. I'm going to be selling the 300 put, selling the 300 call. And then you're going to be buying a long call, and buying a long put at different strike prices that are a little bit out of the money. It makes this triangle type shape. And these are kind of the wings of like a butterfly flapping along. We want to get the body and the head of it. And one of the keys that I'm noticing when doing these trades is you're not necessarily trying to get to this exact profit zone here in the very top, but if you get in these ranges here, which happen pretty frequently, you could actually get very good returns on your funds that you're using. Um, so don't get too greedy on these trades and take your profits when they're available in most cases. So how do you set these up? For the day's expiration, I like to do a 1DTE, where I'm essentially going to, right before market close, enter this trade. And then the next morning, I'm usually just going to buy it back. As long as the futures market didn't change much, and as long as the pie volatility doesn't change much overnight, then the theta will decay in these options overnight. And in a lot of cases, you can make a pretty good profit. You can also consider a little bit further dated out if you don't think implied volatility is going to move too much. You go 15 to 20 days out on the um, DTEs there. For strike prices, I usually sell the at the money call and at the money put on SPY. And then buy wings based on your expected move. Your expected move is what the range of the day will be in most cases, like within one standard deviation of it. So I like to go within that range usually to buy the wings where you're buying those out of the money strikes. Here's an example trade doing this trade on 416 2023. Um, I'm just looking at the numbers on the weekend, but they were very similar when I entered it. So, um, I remember entering at the 4135 strike price anyway. So XPX closed at 41.37. Let's say right before close, you're able to enter this in. The expected moves is about 25. You can find that on the right side of Thinkorswim in the trade log. So we're going to be buying wings around 25 away. 
The sell part, we're going to sell the 3145 call, sell the 4135 put. So these are pretty much at the money within a few points. And these take in a ton of premium because they're at the money, meaning that if they ended up at that exact same strike price, you would keep the full premiums. So what the options market is showing is there's going to be some dramatic probably going to be some dramatic moves from this price. So you need to be paid accordingly for the amount of risk that it might be. So that's why it pays a lot in premium. But we're, again, we're not trying to get the whole 100% of your premium here. Um, we're going to buy the wings at 25. So buy the 4160 call, 4110 put. This took in 17.9 in premium. So $1,790, which is a lot of premium. It only used up 710 in buying power. That's what's really neat about these trades is you don't need a ton of buying power to possibly get very good returns. Again, we're not trying to get that full 17.9, but usually when you close it in the morning after, you could possibly close it for a $1,500 gain right away, which would be a good return on your money from the amount of buying power you're using. So this is the option, what it looks like. I like to left click on the bids for the at the money strikes and hold control and then left click on the ask on the bought wings and you can see there's a 17.9 credit when i opened it up at the market open if we're at least a 50 dollars profit so 17.9 minus 17.4 is 0.5 i would like to close it out there and get your 50 dollars return and you can stop out at any losses that you might see you don't want it to go against you even further and if the markets are moving a lot in one direction, you don't want to get to that max loss. It does occasionally happen. This is not going to be a super high win rate like a lot of the other strategies I do. But you can still get good returns at a fairly reasonable win rate as long as we're within that expected win rate. If you have any questions, you can join at thetatraders.com. We get a little bit more advanced in our strategies and where we buy, where we close them. We've been doing trailing stops and also stop orders to try to eke out a little bit more returns on these. So if you're interested, there is a free seven-day trial. This will go to the yearly and lifetime members. So if you're interested, let's do a lifetime or yearly seven-day free trial on it. We'll see if this might be for you or not. We also do a lot of other trades with zero DTE on SPX, longer dated cash flow puts and um, credit spreads and whatnot. All right, everybody, let's have happy trading, and I'll see you guys in the next video.